Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, here to talk to you about My Hero Academia, Manga Chapter 322. And when it comes to this chapter, I'm going to once again be talking about the differences in translations between the official and unofficial translations and how it kind of affects the meaning of certain uh, specific lines in this chapter. And when it comes to the translations for this week, there isn't that much of a difference, but there is small little nuances that changes between the official and unofficial translations. But what I really want to get into after that is really discussing the end of this chapter and what it means for Deku and the rest of Class A moving forward. So, before we get more into the discussion, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't done so, to subscribe to my YouTube channel, where I do different content pertaining to My Hero Academia. I do discussions, reviews, I cover of the spoilers so if that's something that you're interested in subscribe to my youtube channel and hit that notification bell to be notified for whenever i upload and now without the way let's go right into the differences between the official and unofficial translations to start off uh there is a, a singular difference between the official and unofficial translations when it comes with the first few pages of the chapter pretty much everything up from the beginning of the chapter where we see deku talking about how he can't let go of ida's hand up until where Kirishima saves them is pretty much the same. Even when it comes to what Kirishima told them about that kid that he saw and how he finally connects the dots that the kid that he saw, that the kid that he knew that saved someone was actually Deku when he was in middle school, Kirishima finally connects the points and he gives this sort of line in the unofficial translation about how that action of Deku being a hero and his attitude at that time is key to what's happening right now. That is what Kirishima says in the unofficial translations. But in the official translations, he doesn't bring up the idea of that uh, kid, aka Deku being a hero, but he does say that because he didn't have superpowers or that superpowers of being special doesn't matter, but that the reasoning why they're in this situation right now and why they're doing this for Deku is directly connected to that point. So what I am saying is that in the official translation, Kirishima is basically saying that what they're doing right now, the reasoning why they are doing it, is directly tied to Deku. While in the unofficial translations, it seems to be a little bit more vague and a little bit more broad when it comes to Deku and his involvement with everything and not specifically with Class 1A coming to rescue him. So from there, pretty much everything up, up until the conversation between Deku and Bakugo are pretty much the same. What Mina says about school and how they need Deku to come back so that they can have classes is the same. How Deku responds to the class uh, being there is pretty much the same between both translations. The only difference comes in when Bakugo begins to speak. And even when it comes to Bakugo's speech, it's very similar to uh, what it was between the official and unofficial translations. Uh, one difference would be between the official and unofficial translations comes from what they quote when Bakugo was trying to rescue Deku when he moved on his own. That is something that's different between the official and unofficial translations, but that comes from how they translated these lines prior. But an actual difference comes in when Bakugo is talking to Deku about the strengths and weaknesses. Because in the unofficial translation, he brings up how he was looking at trying to figure out Deku's strengths and weaknesses, while in the official translation, he thinks about how he was trying to be able to understand Deku's strength, but his own weaknesses. So it's a very small difference, but it can be very impactful because it shows that Akago was not just reflecting on the actions of Deku, but also reflecting on his own actions. While in the unofficial translations, it seems as if he's only focusing on Deku. So if anything, it gives a little bit more characterization from Bakugo, showing that he's able to recognize his own weaknesses, which we've seen throughout the story. And that isn't something that is necessarily conveyed in the unofficial translations, so that is a difference. And then we actually get to another difference when it comes to Bakugo's speech. And this difference comes after he finally apologizes to Deku, which is a very emotional and impactful moment. What he says about the goals of the one for all users and Deku's motivations, he says that they aren't misguided and that it's pretty consistent between both translations, but it gets to when he's actually talking about Deku wanting to surpass All Might where the differences in translations occur. Because in the unofficial translations, Bakugo talks about how if Deku wants to surpass All Might, that he has to make sure he protects Yue and the civilians, and that's the only way. 
But in the official translation, he talked about how if Deku wants to live up to All Might's ideals and surpass All Might, that he has to save the civilians, that he has to uh, protect UA, as well as the Class 1A members have to save Deku, and that saving people is how they win. So I really like the diff this difference here because if anything, I prefer the official translations over this because it specifically goes about saying that the important thing that heroes have to do is save people. And it isn't like saying, oh, this is the only way that they have to do this, but that the general idea of being a hero is saving people. And that is necessarily lost in the unofficial translations because it puts a stronger focus on protecting UA and civilians to surpass All Might instead of doing all of that and the core purpose of saving people which would be the way to surpass all might while living up to his ideals which is also very important which shows a small distinction between the official and unofficial translations and once again we get to another small difference between the official and unofficial translations when it comes to what deku says or what he's thinking after Bakugo has finished his speech, because in the unofficial translation, he brings up how everyone is already way ahead of me, but in the official translation, he says everyone has always been way ahead of me. And the reason why I bring this up is because when it comes to this translation and how Deku is thinking, the official translation seems to convey Deku's mindset more accurately to his character than in the unofficial translation because when it comes to Deku he's always seen everyone as being better than him because they've had their quirks longer and that him saying that everyone else is already ahead of him shows that he still has that kind of mindset which is technically true but it still plays into his character of not necessarily being as confident as he usually can be but still showing that he recognizes that they have grown, which leads to his next line of him apologizing for saying that they can't keep up because they've already shown that they have surpassed him already in certain aspects, so they have kept up and surpassed him. That is something that you can only really get from the official translations when it comes to that understanding of the concept and not with the unofficial translation. And then, let me just say this, there are a lot of small differences when it comes to how these are translated and with these small differences, they can really build up over time because another small difference that I saw is when it comes to what 13 says in relationship to the people that are still outside of UA. Because in the unofficial translation, she brings up the idea that there is an extremist that has become violent alongside the escape escapees when it comes to people that have still not been captured or are still outside of the UA barrier. But in the official translation, all she really says is that there are still people outside who are anti-hero vigilantes or are violent pillagers. And this is very different because an extremist would imply a singular person, but violent pillagers involves multiple groups of people, which makes a lot more sense and is something that we've seen in the story. So I think that this is just an issue of being too specific in the unofficial translations and not being as accurate as the official translations being when it comes to the greater scale of people wanting to uh, do what they want with their abilities, as well as what we've seen in the story of people who are just attacking people out of spite and because they want to just gain more stuff. And then, once again, we have another small difference when it comes to what 13 is saying about how it connects to what Deku has done because everything from uh, what she says about how more people are going into the UA barrier, how the violence of these specific uh, individuals that have come into groups, how it's easier to catch them, and how the heroes and the police are trying to do their best, a small difference comes from what she says at the end. Because in the unofficial translation, it brings up this idea that 13 is thanking Deku for everything that he has done up until this point. But in the official translations, she's saying what he did, he doesn't have to do anymore because now the burden can be taken up by other heroes and by the police. So when it comes to 13's character, because she is a teacher, it just makes sense that she would be more uh, trying to take the burden off of Deku than thanking him for taking on this burden because Deku taking on this burden and being thanked for it kind of contradicts what class 1A was trying to do, which is to take the burden away from So 13 saying that the burden can now be given to the heroes as well as the other police kind of plays into the idea more in the official translation than in the unofficial translation. And now we get to the last difference between the official and unofficial translations. And it primarily ties into what the other students are telling Deku about the Huey barrier. 
because in the unofficial translations, you have Hagakure who brings up this idea that this barrier connects to Shiketsu High School and how this system is extremely crazy. While in the official translations, Hagakure still brings up how this system is very like big and how there's things that Deku hasn't seen, but that she says that it can combine with Shiketsu, which is very different than saying that they are connected because connected means that the entire barrier spans across the entirety of Japan at that moment. But I think that saying it combines with it means that there are two separate entities that can come together eventually to combine. So if anything, it seems to be a little bit more clarity for the official translations when it comes to their different barriers and how they are different that can combine instead of with the unofficial translation, which implies that it's just one big barrier that crosses UA and Shiketsu together at the same time. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the differences between the official and unofficial translations. And with that, I really want to get into the gist of this story, where it primarily ties into what we see at the end of manga chapter 322. So yeah, if you remember correctly what happens at the end of this chapter, yeah, a lot of the civilians are very mad and very agitated at the fact that Deku, the person that Shigaraki is looking for, is coming back to UA. And they bring up points about how he's a ticking time bomb and how they were told that they would be safe here and that if they bring this boy here that it would put them in danger that he can go somewhere else and that if they really want to protect him that they need to do it somewhere else and not there and many people are trying to calm them down but these people are just so agitated and so irritated that they don't want deku here which is interesting because this is sort of kind of an idea that deku had because he says that he can't go back there and that's not an option before they even hear these civilians crying about not letting Deku in. So it brings up this point of, can Deku actually stay at UA? And from my perspective, it's a mixture of both yes and no. And I'll explain. So for starters, let's talk about the civilians and how they are being very adamant about how if Deku was here, it's putting them in danger. In actuality, they're in danger no matter what. Society has crumbled. Villains are trying to take over the world. This is a safe haven for them, but how long would this safe haven last? Even if Deku was there, we've seen that all for one has a tendency to think multiple steps ahead. And it isn't unfeasible to believe that to get Deku to come to all for one, he could just threaten UA and threaten the people there. Sure, you're bringing everyone in one place for their safety and you don't want a ticking time bomb like Deku to be there, but even still, you're all gathered in one place, meaning that you're still a larger target if that place were to ever become a hostage situation. So either way, the people are still in danger because All For One is still out there, out and about. As we've seen in the last few chapters, yeah, Deku being on his own could have been the worst case scenario because he was almost taken by All For One, meaning that everything that these people are yelling out would have meant nothing because All For One would have just come there and enslaved them anyway. So it's weird to see how these civilians are just acting unruly, but it kind of makes sense because they are in the state of panic and they've lost faith in heroes. And that's something that even Deku was able to see, but luckily enough, Uraraka was there to prevent him from leaving. So my idea is this. I think that Deku will stay at UA, but it's not gonna be that he stays there permanently. You would as more of a place where he can rest and relax for a little while before going back to fighting the villains. Because here's the thing. Class A's goal wasn't just to protect Deku and bring him back to UA, it was for them to work together with Deku to help stop All For One, either staying at UA and thinking of a plan, or even just going out with Deku on patrols most likely to help him find him and stop him in reference to All For One. So even though all of these people are saying that Deku can't stay, they're not necessarily wrong but they also have to realize, and I think this is tying into what Uraraka is going to do, as well as potentially some other civilians inside of UA are going to do, they're going to convince them that, yeah, Deku may be a ticking time bomb, but he's really the only hope of stopping all for one. And if we just send him out and he so happens to get captured and he we're not here to protect him or he's not here in the most protected place in the world so that he can heal up, then we're doomed. And I think Uraraka may make that point because at the end of the chapter, she brings up the idea of who's going to be the heroes that save the heroes. And in the situation where the people are yelling at Deku to go away and making him seem not protected, Uraraka is most likely going to be the one to stand up to this crowd and try to defend Deku. 
But what would be even more impactful is if we saw people inside of UA who are civilians also defending Deku. And I don't mean like Deku's mom. No, I mean people that we've seen that Deku has specifically saved such as the weasel girl or that rodent girl coming in is like this boy saved me we should let him in he's doing good things if it wasn't for him i would have been killed but the people that he saved at the mall say yeah he seemed kind of creepy but he's still a hero and he was still saving us and he's not getting paid for any of this he's doing this to save people so at the very least we should allow him to heal up here and i think that that's going to be sort of an avalanche that kind of like sways the people to allow him to stay here if not for a little while where Deku and his class are most likely going to use UA as a central base to come back and forth with to either relay new information to them so that they can prepare a plan while going out into the world trying to stop the villains so having them have a base where they can come back to but they may not be able to stay there for long periods of time then there's the question of they're still students how can they really do all of this if they're not professional heroes don't they still need to be in school and mina brings us up that they bring deku back to ua so that they can have classes and what i'm thinking is they're still going to sort of kind of have those classes but it's going to be more of like an, an on the job learning where they're going to learn a little bit more but they're still going to be heroes still acting as heroes taking down villains outside of ua while also learning possibly a few things about you know how to survive an apocalypse so yeah that's kind of like my thought process of it for the most part i think deku at the very least at the next chapter he's gonna stay at ua people are going to convince the people who are telling him to go away that he can stay and that deku as well as class a are going to make the choice of like okay he may not be able to stay at ua all the time but at the very least he needs to stay here he needs to heal up he needs to get better and when he's ready to go back out we're gonna be right behind him to help him and I think there may be a little bit more back and forth doing that a few times. But yeah, that's kind of my thought process of when it comes to UA and how Deku may stay at UA, but also still not stay at UA to look at both sides and to be a good middle ground for both and having Uraraka as well as a few civilians that Deku saved also play a role in convincing the other civilians who are anti-hero to allow Deku to stay here at least for a little while. So yeah, that's all I really have to say about this when it comes to differences in translations as well as this chapter discussion. So let me ask you, what do you think? Do you think that Deku will actually stay at UA? Do you think it's going to be permanent? Do you think it's only going to be for a few days or maybe a week or so? Or do you think that he's not going to be able to stay there at all and that Class 1A is just going to leave UA like everyone else? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below as well as leave a like on this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to be notified for whenever I uh, upload more My Hero Academia content. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! Huh.